we're going to get things underway. So welcome to CJDC TV's uh, uh, City Council All Candidates Forum. Um, and I'll start off by introducing the councillors. So on my far right, your left, we have David Griffith. Uh, next to him, we have uh, Joanna Martins, uh, Shaylee Wilbur, Jeremy Earle, Cheryl Schumann, Blair Lextrom, Amy Kempf, Paul Javakov, and Charlie Parcel. So, um, okay, so uh, we're going to start things off with some opening remarks here. And uh, once we get through with those, we'll start with some questions. I'll ask a few questions first, and then we'll be opening it up to the floor uh, for questions that uh, any of you might have. So if you have any, just keep them in mind, and uh, we'll get to them uh, in the middle of the show sometime. So. Uh, we'll start things off with uh, opening remarks, and I'll pass the mic here to uh, Charlie Perslow. Thank you, and thank you for coming. Just a few words about myself, for those of you who don't know too much about me. I'm married to my life partner, Mary, a retired teacher and well-known regional artist and graphic facilitator. We've been married for 52 years. We had four daughters, losing our oldest, Joanna, to lose to cancer quite recently. We have nine grandchildren, five of them living in Dawson Creek. Two of my daughters live in the Lower Mainland and serve in senior positions in the RCMP. Our third daughter, Jane Connolly, lives in Dawson Creek with her family and she works as a civilian employee at the RCMP detachment. I came to Canada in 1968. I have a bachelor's degree, honors in science, a degree in education, a master's degree in administration. I was a high school teacher, a high school principal in Langley and Souk. I worked on a Ministry of Education assignment in 1979 and resolved that, that I wanted to get away from suburbia and I resolved to come here to this school district where I served as school superintendent and chief executive officer for School District 59 for 20 years, from 1981 and 2001. We resolved, my wife and I resolved to stay here after retirement. And since that time, I've supported countless organizations and individuals in the Peace Region and throughout the North in helping in planning and in effectiveness as organizations. I continue to support family life in our community by using a course called The Seven Habits of Successful Families. Since retirement, I've also become a print artist and serve as president of the Peace River chapter of the Federation of Canadian Artists that encompasses the Alberta Peace Region and the BC Peace Region. I have served two terms as councillor for the city of Dawson Creek. I am seeking re-election for a third term as councillor for the city of Dawson Creek to build on the past seven years where I have learned and experienced many things, some good, some not so good. I've acquired a good insight though into the operation of the city of Dawson Creek, its strengths and its weaknesses, its assets and its liabilities, and its potential and its significant fragility. With your support, I'm hoping to use my skill sets, my knowledge base, my experience base, and working with others, and particularly the people of this community, to help it through what I see and others see as a difficult future four years. Thank you. Great, thank you, Charlie. Uh, we'll move on to... Um all right, we'll move on to uh, Paul. Uh, whenever you're ready, go ahead. Thank you. Um, my name is Paul Javadkoff. I'm originally from the village of Fruitvale in the West Kootenays. And uh, myself and my wife moved up here in 1973 with the BC Forest Service to, to work. We're married. We've got two adult children and two grandchildren, which are awesome. Um, I started, I got involved with the city originally in the 1990s on two economic development advisory committees, one with forestry, with the forest industry, and one with the oil and gas industry. 
since then I've participated in lobbying the BC government for highway improvements and for improvements to the Agricultural Land Reserve. I'm a past president of the Rotary Club here and I've served as uh, chairman of the Rotary TV Auction. I'm a founding member of the South Peace Oilmans, which we started in 1990. And uh, the reason for the South Peace Oilmans Association was as an economic development tool. At that time, there, there was an oil and gas industry here, but it was little known. And uh, we thought that uh, a club would raise the awareness of the oil and gas industry here and uh, benefit the, the economy. I'm also past president of the Mouser Park Society and currently I'm uh, president of Bear Mountain Ski Hill and I serve on the board of the Dawson Creek Athletic Association. My main focus for uh, council is uh, basically the core responsibilities roads, utilities, protective services, city-owned properties, and the airport, and uh, to promote and encourage economic development by supporting both existing businesses here in town and encouraging new business. I served uh, three terms on council starting in 1999, and, uh, and then again here, the fourth term uh, is just the one that's uh, just currently uh, wrapping up. So I've got a lot of experience with the city and a lot of knowledge that I've gained over the years and uh, I think I can help to try and get the city on track as far as uh, the financial issues. Thank you. Great, thank you Paul. Uh, now we can uh, move on to Amy, whenever you're ready, go ahead. Hello everyone. Um, for those that don't know me, my name is Amy Kemp, and I was born and raised in Dawson Creek. Um, I have lived in Dawson Creek and surrounding area my entire life, and I am now raising my two children in a place I'm proud to call home. I have two children, Hunter 7 and Liam 5, who have taught me so much and I'm blessed to be their mom. Prior to having children, I worked for the city of Dawson Creek and Safeway for 11 years. I understand the meaning of dedication, time management, loyalty, problem solving, flexibility, work ethic, and teamwork. After the birth of my second child, I made the decision to leave the workforce and raise my children as I feel this time is very valuable and one that can never be replaced. With my youngest entering kindergarten this September and myself having returned to full-time work, I'm excited to become more involved within my community. I am currently working at Safeway as the administrative manager and I'm a me and I'm approaching my 20th year with the company. In regards to education, I have taken my Associate of Arts degree at Northern Lights College as well as the Office Administration program. My time in the community has been spent volunteering to coach volleyball, volunteering to coach soccer with the South Peace Junior Soccer, volunteering as a scout leader with the first Dawson Creek Scouts program, um, volunteering at the Dawson Creek Alliance Church with the Children's Church and the Women's Ministry volunteering at Notre Dame School, and I recently signed up to help with the Notre Dame Parent Support Group. For Leisure in Dawson Creek, I spend a lot of my time running. I'm an avid runner and enjoy running a minimum of five times a week, at least 10 to 18 kilometers each time I go. I try to enter as many local events as, I'm, as I can, and I'm proud to represent Dawson Creek each time I compete. This year, I'm competing, I compete, this year alone, pardon me, I competed in nine marathons, and I have the future goal of qualifying for the Boston Marathon. When I'm not running, I spend as much time as I can with my boys. Um, with my children, we enjoy the swimming pool, the movie theater, the bowling alley, and the library. This summer, I had the pleasure of being a tourist in my own town with my children and visiting all the places that attract the tourists and make our community a great place to live. I enjoy attending the different attractions and events that happen throughout Dawson Creek and at the Account Event Center. The main reason for running is I want to give back to my community what my community has given to me. I have a lot of community pride and want to be able to take part in the decision making for the future direction of Dawson Creek. Thank you, Amy. Uh, we can move on to uh, Blair whenever you're ready. Go ahead. Right. Thank you, Hugh. And uh, thank you for coming out on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. Uh, and most
most of us are hoping this lasts at least another month before our winter sets in. My name is Blair Lextrom. I am uh, seeking your support in the upcoming municipal election for the position of City Council. I have lived in Dawson Creek my entire life. Uh, I am married to my wife, Vicki, of 36 years. We have two amazing daughters who are grown, and uh, with their spouses now, we have five grandchildren which is one of the reasons that you want to be engaged to make sure your community continues to be what I consider the best place on earth to live. Uh, I say that for a number of reasons. Uh, we have a quality of life that is second to none, but recognizing that I believe it's the best place on earth to live, we can still always, each and every day, try and improve on what we have, and that's the goal of every city council. I was asked uh, why I was weren't running, uh, because previously in my life, in 1993, I served on City Council as a councillor. I was uh, lucky enough to be elected to City Council then. Following that, in 1996 until 2001, I had the honour of being elected Mayor of Dawson Creek, and I served in that capacity and was very proud of what I was able to accomplish along with my team. And I, I say that, which is the single most important issue. Uh, as an elected official or somebody running for office, we far too often hear people promise they'll do something, when in fact all you can really promise is you'll work hard for your constituents, because if you promise something and you don't gain the support of the majority of your council, you'll leave a promise unfulfilled. Not because of your lack of trying or lack of effort, but that's the reality of the democratic society in which we live. So my commitment to each and every citizen of Dawson Creek, the people here today and the ones that weren't able to make it, is I commit to work as hard as I can for you, uh, the sign of a good elected official, and I think the primary issue is they have to be a good listener. You can be uh, full of great ideas, but if you can't listen to the people you represent, I think you're headed for a bit of trouble, and the people will recognize that, and your term will be short-lived probably by the next election. Uh, we have an amazing city, as I said. I'm running. Uh, our budget today is about $60 million. Uh, that's both operational and capital combined. Uh, it's a very significant budget. I'm not running because I'm upset at what others have done on council. Many times people ask, why are you doing this? Are you upset at some decisions? I'm running because I believe I have the experience and the past, uh, I guess, ability that I can bring to the table to try and improve on what we have already. I mentioned that my two terms in office as mayor and one term as council. Uh, I left the mayor's chair in 2001 and sought the position of member of the Legislative Assembly of British Columbia. Uh, where I served for 12 years, and I look forward to your questions this afternoon. Thank you. Great, thank you, Blair. And uh, uh, so, Cheryl, whenever you're ready, go ahead. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to acknowledge that we are here today on the traditional lands of the Treaty 8 First Nations. So, my name is Cheryl Schumann, and I am here tonight, to, or today, to ask for your support. Uh, on October 20th. I'm a longtime resident of Dawson Creek with roots deep in the South Peace. My family arrived in the area about 120 years ago and I have spent the last 27 years raising my family here in the city. I am very active in the community and I enjoy the quality of life and the economic opportunities available here. I worked at Northern Health for many years caring for our seniors and I also operated a licensed daycare in my home for 10 years when my kids were small. I first ran for City Council and was elected in 2008, and I have been privileged to represent the citizens of Dawson Creek for the last three terms. I am running for City Council because I care about this place and the citizens that call it home. Being elected to City Council allows me the privilege of giving back by helping to take good care of a community that has given so much to me and my family for generations. I'm committed to listening to the citizens of Dawson Creek and working hard for you at the council table for the next four years. It is important that we work together to create a city with a quality of life that, where we can afford to live, work, play, and retire. I will work hard with council to make fiscally prudent decisions, understanding that we need to keep life here in Dawson Creek affordable. I will continue to champion environmental sustainability and waste reduction, and I believe that we can create a diverse and resilient community that is safe and welcoming to all. For a positive, progressive voice on your city council, please vote for Cheryl Thank you. Great, thank you, Cheryl. Uh, we'll move on to uh, Jeremy. Whenever you're ready, go ahead. 
Thank you very much, Hugh, and thank you, everybody. We've got a small but handsome audience today, uh, and welcome everybody at home tuning in. Uh, my name is Jeremy Earl, and I am running for city council because uh, I've been in Dawson Creek my almost my entire adult life, and this is where I've chosen to make my home. This is where I started a family, bought my first house, fell along with my fiance, started my career. This community has meant so much. And while you're likely going to hear uh, throughout the next hour or so about some of the challenges we have and how we as aspiring city leaders and candidates for public office are going to work our best to address those, uh, this community also has just a tremendous amount of promise and opportunity. And as amazing as it's been for me, I want to make sure it continues to be that way and even better if it can be for my daughter and my nieces and nephews that are also here. So I've been <clears throat> very privileged in the work I've done in my time here. I've worked uh, for the Hospital Foundation, raising money for healthcare equipment. I've worked for the Canada Vets for five and a half years, doing corporate partnerships. Um, and, and in that time, I currently work at Lakeview Credit Union doing marketing communications and member engagement. And, and uh, the first thing that struck me in my time here and the circles I began running in was how instrumental local business is to supporting the quality of life that we've come to enjoy here in Dawson Creek. And uh, that was a big part of the reason I ended up on the local Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors for six years, uh, three and a half years as the president, is because uh, I wanted to advocate for and contribute to uh, an environment where uh, local business can thrive and support our community. So uh, that is what I'll continue to endeavor to do as a counselor if I'm fortunate enough to be elected. Uh, on top of that, I, I'm a big uh, advocate of our local music scene. I've played in some bands, I've held MC events and organized events where I could, and uh, I, I have a passion for that in addition. So I, I recognize as a municipal government our first responsibility is to provide services and to figure out, uh, on behalf of citizens, how much we're willing to pay, how much we're willing to do, and as I said, we're going to have dealt a little deeper into that as we go. Uh, but I believe we have a vital role to play in fostering uh, a kind of community where people want to live and raise their families and invest and grow their futures. Um, one guy, like, uh, to Blair's point, I won't make any too many specific promises, but I will promise that uh, I'll listen, I'll be uh, reasonable, I'll give you every opportunity to change my mind, and if you've got better, I'm convinced. Thank you, and please consider voting for me. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, moving on, uh, Shaley. All right, well, thank you. Um, good afternoon, my name is Shaley Wilbur. I have lived in Dawson Creek since 1996. I am a mother to five and a nana to seven, and I am seeking re-election. I would like to recognize the lands of the Treaty 8, but also the rich culture and history of all who call these lands home. I'd also like to thank CJDC for hosting this event this afternoon, all of the candidates who have put their name forward, and to all of you who have come out this afternoon and those of you watching at home. I believe in a diverse and inclusive community. It is why I ran in my first election, and it is why I'm seeking re-election. I have a continued focus on housing, quality of life, accessibility, and advocating, while minding that we have to be fiscally responsible to our taxpayers. Now these topics are something that I'm really passionate about, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have with regards to them. I just know I'm not gonna just cover them in three minutes of introduction. So I am currently the chair of the South Peace Health Services Society, and I am proud of the work that has been done this far. Work that will see a community house here in the north. It will be similar to the Ronald Donald House, where patients from all over the South Peace and the North Peace seeking medical treatment will have an affordable place to stay. It is a partnership of all of our communities, regional areas, and our First Nations neighbors in the South Peace. I also continue to be the community champion for Love Dawson Creek, which focuses on promoting our local small, non-franchised businesses. And it's a program that's a partnership with Northern Development Trust. And yes, I'm that lady that forced her family to drive around in a car wrapped in Love Dawson Creek for four years. Council makes decisions about where the ship is going. It is the job of our city employees, 
to get us to that goal line. Now, as a decision maker, I am not the one who's carrying out that work, but I have complete faith in the people we have that are doing the work. So in order for us to address all of the gaps that we are facing, and there are many, our community must do it together. So thank you. I humbly ask for your support, and I look forward to your questions. Great. Thank you, Shaley. Um, Johanna, whenever you're ready, go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you everybody for coming out this afternoon. It's a beautiful, gorgeous day, and thank you for coming and making yourselves an informed voter. Uh, thank you for all of our, can, our, all of us up here, right? We become a little bit of an election family when you go through this process. So my name is Johanna Martins, and some of you may recall I did run for City Council four years ago under the name of Johanna Coates. And since that time, I got married, and now I'm with Johanna Martin, so that's a little bit of a change in my life. As well as recently, we just had a little boy in July, who is now three months. Um, and as well as I have two older daughters, who are 11 and 13. So I've lived in Dawson Creek for the past 20 years, and all of my children have been born here. Uh, both of my parents were born and raised in Dawson Creek, and I had a grandpa that was here as well, that sat on city council in the 80s. So I've been involved and invested in our community for many, many years. A lot of my family currently even works for different municipalities across the province and even Alberta. So I've kind of grown up in an environment of being part of the city, about you know the idea of being invested, that it takes all of us to get out and do our part in our community. And so even to this day, I still believe in, in a lot of that. I believe in being engaged, in being involved in our community, uh, which is definitely why I'm running for City Council again, because that's exactly what I want to do, is be more involved and engaged. Right now, I've been running my own consulting company for the past 10 years, and I've done a lot of different community projects in that time. Currently, one of the projects I've been working on is the Success by Six and Children's First, and it's two government-funded streams of funding that come into our community to support the early years. And that has been such rewarding work because I get to work with families every day. I get to you know talk to the families and get to be involved with kids and who doesn't love little kids, they're pretty darn cute. And so it's a really rewarding job to also see all the service providers and all of the different community groups that we have that make up Dawson Creek. I also am the secretary for our Kiwanis Club, and I just joined the service club about a year ago. And if you're not part of our service club, man, they're one of the coolest things to do because it's a lot of fun working with a bunch of like-minded people, again, uh, that are here to enhance the quality of our life. I also am one of the board of directors here for the KPAC, as well as the BLT Society, which is the Building Learning Together Society. Uh, I've been involved in a number of different nonprofit groups and working with different clubs, um, different parent groups throughout the years that I've lived here. So my commitment to being involved in our community, I hope, will continue and I get to do it in this capacity of sitting on as your city council. Thank you. Thank you, Johanna. Uh, David, you're last up whenever you're ready. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is David Griffith, for those of you that don't know who I am. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank all the other candidates here that made this election possible, and the CJDC for bringing local news to this community for a long, long time, actually. They've been a big part of this community, whether they know it or not. Um, second of all, continuing on, uh, the reason why I'm running for uh, election, well, I think I can bring a lot of different things to this council. Because I'd like you to all consider that when you're electing the council, you're not electing a group of people. You're electing a team. Six people that are going to lead this, this city into the next four years with a mayor to help them out. It's a, it's a big responsibility and what you really need to consider when you're electing us is that we need the diversity on this council. It's not just, a, can't all be one vision, it can't all be one type of person. You need a little bit of everything. Um, I've grown up in this area, I was born in Dawson Creek Hospital, I've lived here my entire life. I, I grew up out in Farmington, which gave me a little bit of uh, the work hard mentality growing up on a little small farm. It might have been small, but I still had to work hard every day. Um, 
I was lucky enough to get hired on by a local contractor who showed me the responsibility of what it takes to build beautiful buildings. I've been in this town, I've built many of the buildings, and I've worked on lots of it. I think this kind of experience will really help the City Council to bring in another perspective, how things work, why they work, why infrastructure fails, the little things we can do to make this community better. It's not all about the big projects, it's about the little things. In my youth, I spent many, many years in 4-H, which taught me a lot of community orientation. I've traveled the world, I've been to six of the seven continents, I've been to cities all over the world in countless countries. I've seen the world and I'd really like to bring that perspective back to Dawson Creek. I, I gave myself my 30s where I didn't have to be part of the community, I could live my life for me. And now that I'm in my 30s, I'd really like to start contributing back to society. Uh, thank you, and I hope you uh, watch the City Council debate and see the people you want to be on the team. Thank you. Thanks, David. So uh, we'll start things off uh, with the first question, and um, just uh, keep in mind you have a minute to answer all these questions. So uh, the first one is, um, what do you see as the uh, biggest challenge facing Dawson Creek, and uh, how can we address that? I think the biggest challenge is balancing our sustainability, I'm talking about the financial sustainability, with the continuing of our quality of life. With all the recreational services we have in Dust Creek, it's really hard to keep all the buildings maintained, ran, staffed, and still keep our budget under control. You know, it, it's it's about trying to build a, the base of our, our, our uh, community up so we have more capability of keeping these buildings alive between the Encana Center, the K-Pad, the swimming pool, the rinks, all of these buildings take a huge amount of investment, and that's just the recreational side. We have all our infrastructure as well. So it's about bringing more to Dawson Creek so we have more of a base to work with. Okay, thank you, David. Um, Joanna? Um, yeah, so I would say that probably one of the biggest challenges, and you'll probably hear a lot of people talk about it, is our fiscal responsibility uh, and the fiscal gap, or what people call that as a fiscal gap. Uh, I think there's going to be some hard decisions that our council has to make and we need to be transparent when we're making those decisions and make sure that we're engaging the community on whatever the decisions are. Uh, I think that, you know, a, a good idea might be to look at bringing in a third independent party to review the finances of the city in order to make an analysis of recommendations of what we should or shouldn't be doing to get ourselves into a better position. Uh, always having an outside perspective is sometimes worth looking at a problem because sometimes, you know, if we're too close to the issue, it's hard to see all of the ideas that uh, might be out there to help us. Uh, there's lots of innovative things I think we can do, and I think that's going to be a real conversation for all of the council that gets selected. Thank you. Okay, Shaley. All right, thank you. This is really to the answers are kind of all the same, but a little bit different. Um, we do have to, to be fiscally responsible to our taxpayers and, and look at what that means and where those gaps are. But within those gaps, we have a housing gap. We have a housing gap for seniors, for transitional, for affordable. We have a gap with accessibility. And accessibility isn't just our sidewalks and our roads. It's also just having access to services and do we have all those services. So I think our biggest challenge is going to be talking to our community and really discussing needs versus wants, and how we're going to move forward with that. So at the end of the day, the discussion is with the taxpayers, and it will be the taxpayers, I think, very strongly will tell us one way or the other what their expectations are and how they expect us to achieve that. So I think we need to continue with conversations with the community. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Thank you for the question. Um, so, yeah, uh, similarly echoing the sentiments expressed by the other candidates so far is uh, how we manage our budgetary constraints without undermining growth, or how we, you know, trim the fat to the extent we need to without cutting through meat and bone and uh, limiting our opportunities moving forward. So, you know, it, it's a uh, difficult balancing act. If we're not watching our, our dollars, we're going to find ourselves spending more and more of our annual budget servicing debt or having to rely on emergency funding or 
things of that nature. Uh, having said that, there is, uh, if you cut too deeply, an opportunity cost you incur by not being able to invest in the kind of assets and amenities you need to attract business and to attract skilled workers like doctors, engineers, lawyers, etc. So uh, that is going to be a uh, long conversation with our voters. So, ongoing. Okay, uh, Cheryl. Thanks. So, um, of course, as everyone here is already saying, uh, it's su super important that we uh, recognize that there are challenges uh, providing services and while keeping things affordable in Dawson Creek. And so, really, I think that that will be our biggest challenge moving forward is, is understanding what we need, as Shaley said, versus what we want and uh, understanding how we will be able to fund those uh, services, needs, wants, and uh, keeping it affordable for Dawson Creek. It's, it's, uh, we can't price people out of the town. We need to make sure that everybody can afford to live here and participate in what we offer them. Thank you. Blair. Thank you, you. Well, I, you know, I think you're going to hear probably the same from all of us. The, the issue of fiscal management is probably the single most important issue we have to focus on with the city. Um, what that allows us to do as a community is to grow our quality of life, but do it in a sustainable fashion. Running a city or running a province is not a lot different than running your household. There are things we need in our day-to-day -day lives that we must purchase and we have to supply for our families or ourselves. Then there are those things that we would like to have. Um, we don't always uh, or aren't always able to purchase those things we like to have. Sometimes we will put a long range plan in place and one year, three years, five years or 20 years down the road you may achieve it. We have to do the same with the city of Dawson Creek. Uh, presently we receive about $14 million a year in fair share revenue from the provincial government. Uh, a good portion of that today is in the operational budget, which is a concern for me, and I think we have to move that over to capital so we can be more sustainable in the long term. All right, uh, Amy. Thank you. Um, same kind of answer as the ones that answered before me. I think the biggest thing is you know, living within our means, um, finding that balance of our wants and our needs. Um, and making a long-term plan. Is this something that we can do now or is this something that we should do later? Um, it's, you know, that fiscal gap and the hard decisions to make move forward. Um, yes, yeah, just finding out, you know, what does the community want, but at the same time being able to, you know, work, live, and play here as well. All right, Paul. So if we had that much of a consensus, I think we would have already made some gains <laughs> <laughs> with the fiscal gap. Yeah. But that's that's the basically the crux of the the issue in Dawson. We need we have to come to terms with a balance of priorities, and I think everybody is aware of the condition of our streets. Streets are one thing. We've got drainage issues, uh, you know, that are gonna amount to probably over $30 million. We've got flood mitigation issues. Um, so it's a matter of council being able to agree on uh, what the priorities are, what the, you know, what we're spending money on. And, you know, like Blair mentioned, the, the fair share is we have to start using it for infrastructure. Okay, Charlie. Thank you. Well, last night I went home really upbeat because uh, someone I respect is thinking the same way as I have thought for years uh, about the fair share. So, Blair, thank you for your thoughts on that matter. It's encouraging to me. Without money, you can't deliver all the services, highly desirable as they might be. So it's incumbent on council to really manage its money prudently, and to plan in a long-term basis. Our challenge is we have a very weak tax base. 1% generates $170,000. We have the need for millions and millions of dollars on what I would consider core matters. But we can't do that because it would generate too much in taxes. This is our fiscal gap challenge. 
It's been a long time coming. It's here today. Thank you. Thank you all for your answers. Um, we're going we're to be revisiting the uh, budget later on, but uh, right now we're going to move on to a very hot button uh, topic in the community, which is Rotary Lake. Um, now, as you all know, Rotary Lake was uh, shut down after that uh, terrible tragedy that happened uh, a little while back. Um, now, would any of you, uh, well, to all of you, would you be in favor of reopening Rotary Lake, and uh, how would we go about doing that? So we'll start off with uh, Charlie. Yes, I would be in favor of opening Rotary Lake. Um, the, uh, I believe the uh, Northern House uh, position on that matter is unrealistic un and unnecessary. And the, uh, the need to correct whatever it was is readily at hand and is, is waiting to be installed. And so I think it's uh, behoven Northern House to really recognize the importance of this lake to the community and the fact that uh, this is a necessary thing for so many, many people. So I think the remedy is, is, is easy and uh, it operated uh, for years uh, very successfully and so I would uh, certainly like that. Whether Northern Health will do that, I, I can't foretell. I, uh, it's beyond the city's scope to have action right now. I'll go ahead. Yeah, the Rotary Club of Dawson Creek has uh, asked the Minister of Health to ensure that the, the Rotary Lake will remain uh, designated as a lake. And if they agree, then I, the lake, there should be a way to, to deal with Northern Health and reopen the lake with some minimal uh, safety improvements. Um, as a lake, it doesn't fall under the criteria of uh, pool regulations. So it's been, it's operated since the 60s and you know there have been some issues with it and as those issues are identified they're corrected and uh, I support opening the lake as it is if there, I don't think there's any way that the city can afford to do anything more than the way it was. Okay, thank you. Um, Amy. Um, I am very much in favor of uh, reopening Rotary Lake. As someone who has swam in Rotary Lake as a child and has taken my children there, um, it is very um, great facility for everyone to enjoy. So, yes, I, I realize that there is some... You know, things that we have to do um, to make it so that it's um, reopened, um, but I'm very much in support of it. Okay. Blair. Thanks, you. Uh, I too am in favor of reopening Rotary Lake. As I indicated in my opening remarks, I've grown up here. I spent a great deal of my youth down there with our family. Uh, our children have spent a great deal of time there with my wife and I, and now our grandchildren. Uh, it was a, an incredibly you know, important part of our lives, but they, apparently, and it's clear, there are some things we have to do to ensure the safety of that facility for all who use it, and I'm committed to do that as well, but do I want to reopen Rotary Lake? Most definitely, uh, with all due respect to Northern Health, I think they have overstepped their boundaries. Uh, as Paul said, this is designated as a lake and has been uh, prior to the pool regulations and therefore is grandfathered under that, and uh, hopefully we can work with them too get this back on track without costing the taxpayer many, many, many tens of thousands of dollars per year. So I could um, echo what everybody's saying here. Uh, we have heard loud and clear from the community that Rotary Lake is a very important amenity uh, that they value. And so um, obviously I also value the lake and um, I'm hoping that we can reopen it, and I'm hoping that we can reopen it in a way where it will be safe for all of our community. So. Uh, yes, I, uh, so 
once again, uh, as we go down the line, we're kind of echoing each other's center. But, then, you know, contingent upon us being able to reopen it as a lake, uh, as a lake designation, I, I think, you know, one that capital spend with the, the uh, maintenance, uh, and the maintenance moving forward is great if, if it has to be reopened only under the designation of a pool. The costs go up exorbitantly. What was it? I got one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. Um, so that's very difficult to integrate with uh, the answers we just gave you about the fiscal gap and our budgetary constraints. Um, and, and I don't mean to be cavalier about it. obviously the incident which uh, prompted the closing of the lake was very tragic. Uh, we all, as citizens, have got children in our lives who play it. We'd like to see it reopened in its in all its former glory, but contingent upon Northern Health's decision. All right, yes, I mean, I can echo what everyone else has said and probably will say because that's kind of how it works. And we did hear from the community loud and clear. Um, I wasn't able to be at that uh, town hall meeting, but I'm very thankful for the person who live streamed on Facebook because I was able to watch it from where it was, so I know how the community feels. One way or the other, it is either going to be designated as a lake or it's going to be designated by a pool, and that's not a decision that's within our hands, and we'll have to cross that bridge when it gets there. I do think that if we are not able to retain the designation of a lake, that we're going to be looking at a referendum because it won't just be the capital cost, it'll be the operation costs. But I do think moving forward, regardless of what comes back from the Minister of Health, I think the city needs to be looking at putting some sort of permanent recognition down at the park for those lives that were lost um, in that area. And I think that's important for closure and for families to move forward. Yes, I agree 100% with everybody here on uh, Rotary Lake. I think it's one of the unique things about our community that really is why the community is up in arms is because we're one of the few places that has such a unique pool for the whole community. And we've had it in our community for so long that all of us can remember growing up and being there. Uh, and first and foremost, it has to be safe. Where, you know, we don't want any more tragedies happening down there. And the fact that you know we are very passionate about it as a community, I think it'll be something that, again, what Sherry says, is not going to be going away anytime soon. And well, we have to be made decisions by the taxpayers and everybody in the community as a whole needs to come together with some sort of a decision because it's so passionate. Near, near and dear to so many people's hearts. I also like the Rotary Lake. I grew up, I went there many times as a kid, and I probably will go there again, again eventually. Um, as far as the lake goes, it's a shame that a small maintenance issue became a huge tragedy and got the bureaucracy involved in the situation. It would have been nice if we could have had the situation dealt with before it even became a situation, but you know what, you just gotta let the bureaucracy do its thing and keep fighting for the lake we like. Till then, I'd just like to remind all citizens of Dawson Creek, we do have a nice neighbor who's Coopy. They have a park down there. There's a nice beach, you can go to the river. If you need affordable places to swim in the summer, there are, we have a whole rural area of great places to go swimming. I grew up in the country. I know they're there. But till then, the city of Dawson Creek should keep fighting for the Rotary Lake. I think it's a great plan. Thanks again, everyone, for your answers. Um, so, um, moving on, we, as we heard um, a little while ago, there was a huge LNG project approved up in Kinemat, um, and it'll have big effects on us, obviously, up here being a, a major supplier of gas. Um, so, starting with uh, David, what approach would you have uh, on council to balance the needs of residents versus the needs of industry as these activities ramp up? Well, that's a really hard topic for a couple of different reasons. I grew up in the country, so as a Farmington resident, I realized that LNG is not just a city issue, it is a rural issue, it is a whole countrywide issue. When there are whole road networks and communities being torn apart by the oil and gas industry, you know that there's long-term negative effects, but there are long-term positive effects. And what you gotta do is you gotta use the positive to help mitigate the negative. You have to start building communities back after the LNG comes through here. We are a community of, with transient people that come in and go. But the core of Dawson Creek has been here for a long time. 
the people that have been here know that this is a thing that will come and go just like every other gas boom, every other industry boom. But the truth of it is, it's building a core community is what we need to work on to build this society better and make the city prosper. Um, yeah, so I think that, you know, with all of the new activity that be happening here, we need to make all of our decisions through council on the basis of sustainability. And sustainability, to me, is a three-legged stool. You need to have, you know, responsibility for the environment, you need to have an economic responsibility, and you need to have social responsibility as well to be sustainable. So I think that the role of council will be, as decisions are being brought to them, that new council that we need to keep in mind those three sustainable points in all of the decisions because it's also about long-term quality of life and not just the now um, diversifying our economy making sure that we don't go through those big boom and bust um, which are affect a lot of families and working families here so we need to make sure that we're making responsible decisions the best we can Alright, I know that Mayor Ackerman said this a couple of days ago, being interviewed, but I believe it started here in Dawson Creek, and we are the NG of the LNG, and that's the reality. And I think what we need to do is completely recognize this isn't long term. In the grand scheme of things, it's short term. And so we need to, as we have been doing, continue those conversations with the players in this resource industry. We need to make sure that that social aspect that they bring is being put to legacies that are going to last a long time in our community and I think we need to utilize those conversations and leverage what's coming at us um, that's favorable and make sure that we're using it wisely whether it be for infrastructure um, I know that the city's looked at our water rates and different things that are utilized by that resource um, industry and how are we going to benefit from that and how are we going to make it better for our citizens so we have opportunity and I think we must be mindful of that and stick to it for our long term goal. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, similar. Uh, this is a, a phenomenal transitional fuel that will last, you know, for a generation or two. Uh, but it, it's not something that will be around forever. So we need to make sure while the opportunity is here, we're leveraging it to its fullest um, to diversify our economy. Uh, we're, we're, the city has recalibrated and re-emphasized uh, sport and event tourism moving forward. Uh, that's great because we can double dip in addition to bringing money into our community. Uh, the amenities and, and uh, programs and, and events come from that can also be enjoyed by our local residents to increase quality of life. Um, we need to make sure while the industry is here, we're leveraging this to pursue more public-private partnerships similar to the Shell Reclamation Facility for Boat Water. So this is a big deal for us. It's going to need some uh, stability for, I don't know, 20, 40 years into the future. Um, but we need to make sure that we're also um, encouraging diversity in our economy and making sure that we're not forgetting about uh, the mining and forestry and, and all those other industries that, that make Dawson Creek what it is today. Um, and we need to make sure that we have smart growth um, once this boom starts again because I know in the past when we had a boom, we, um, you know, we had some unintended consequences from the development that happened and uh, we need to make sure that um, we have some affordable housing and that everybody can afford to live here and not just people who can, you know, pay $2,000 a month rent because they're here working in the industry. So, yeah. Thanks, you. I think there are a number of things we can do to continue what we've been doing for many years. Liquefied natural gas is nothing more than the natural gas we have been extracting from the ground here. We will be shipping it by a pipeline down to Kitimat. It will be liquefied and shipped to a new market, which is really what LNG is all about, not just for British Columbia, but our country. I think it will allow our community to stabilize. I don't believe we've seen the boom and bust cycles of other communities in the region particularly. I think we've been well established and fairly solid. It doesn't mean we haven't seen ups and downs. I don't believe we're going to grow by thousands of people. I think we have the opportunity to grow some, but we're going to have to ensure that we have uh, good industrial land availability, uh, good 
zoning requirements to meet the needs of that industry that does not want to locate here, but at the same time recognizing we live here because of our quality of life, and we want to ensure that that city planning is looked after. Um, same kind of thing. I think with LNG coming, yes, it is going to be a um, big change for our community. We have to be ready for it, prepared, um, and offering everyone um, services and being prepared. Like um, Charles had said, you know, when people come in here, that we can still offer um, the services that we need throughout Dawson Creek, um, and just planning and putting all of um, finances and stuff into the right places to ensure that um, Dawson Creek still maintains um, its affordability and a great place to live. LNG is just a continuation of uh, the natural gas development, it's resource development and the city has an opportunity and they need to capitalize on the opportunity. If we don't capitalize on it, Fort St. John will, uh, Grand Prairie will, uh, other communities will. Um, the thing is that the city's role in my opinion is to support our local businesses, the service industry, to participate in that development. Um, the, the city can't create jobs, we don't do that. But we need to support the local people, and in turn, they will create economic development. They'll, they'll get uh, other industries to come in, will develop the service industry, which just enhances the opportunities for people to deal here. Well, I think we're very fortunate to have the oil gas industry here in its present format. I, my research into what the implications of this is that really the benefit is stability and a long-term stability to the community. I think what we, uh, we need to really respect and appreciate what we have. There are some downturns and we need as council to try to be strong advocates for mitigating against those. Affordability has been mentioned, I think, by Councillor Schumann, definitely affordability. We need to advocate for local purchasing, local hiring, and, and engage with the representatives of the oil gas companies to ensure that. And we need to monitor health-related issues to this industry. Thank you. All right, thanks everyone for your answers. Um, so we're gonna go with uh, one more question before we open it up to the floor. Um, and that has to do with the budget. Now obviously that's a big role of council. You all mentioned it uh, earlier on. So um, what are some areas that you think spending could increase or that you think spending could uh, decrease? And we'll start that off with uh, Charlie. Well, we have to spend a lot more money on our core infrastructure. It is in a sad situation. We have incredible bills coming for very necessary pieces of infrastructure. So definitely an increase in expenditure based upon a long-term plan and priorities rather than the flavor of the day so that we have a community that functions and people can live here with safety and confidence around services. What needs to be cut? Well, certainly I know from my previous experience as school superintendent, you need to do a line-by-line -line analysis and sharpen the pencil. Do we really need to do this, to do, to do that? Do we really need to travel to so-and-so? So sharpen the pencil, and also we need to engage with the community, presenting them options of services that might be curtailed or reduced, and use that feedback to develop a plan. So the, the issue, this issue of fiscal gap, I mean, administration has been telling us about it for years. Four years ago when we were elected, we determined that fiscal gap and infrastructure were the top priorities. Um, this last summer, we started a process to, to try and identify, uh, you know, areas that we could cut involving the public. So there was a questionnaire went out and the results showed that people would, they want 
uh, spending cuts before they before they incur any tax increases. So the next step is to start identifying the cuts that are, are there and uh, getting the public support to make them. Um, it's a process that it has to work that way because I don't think council can make those really difficult decisions on their own. Okay. So yes, I think I, I would agree with um, Charlie on this one that we have to kind of look at the budget and see where we can make our cuts. Um, what is something that we need to do right now? What is something that um, you know can we wait um, for a later time? You know, the city sewer plan, um, continuing with that, the upgrading of the water. Um, distribution system, you know, and, and at the same time being financially state sustainable. So somehow you've got to find um, that balance. Um, is this the time we do this, or do we wait for it later on? Is this what we need, um, or is this something that um, we can wait until later? Because at the same time, we're living here, we need to be able to um, still be able to afford to live here um, without um, getting financially um, into trouble. Thanks, you. And uh, where would we spend more and where would we spend less? It's a, a very open-ended question to answer in one minute, but uh, in a nutshell, there are two distinct budgets that we operate with in the city. One is the operational budget. That is very similar in our day-to-day -day lives of running your household, buying your groceries, paying your bills. Uh, we have to be able to commit and afford that. The other side of it is the capital expenditure. You can borrow money for that. Like you and I, and I'm sure maybe there's people in this room who paid cash for their house. I think most people went to the bank, found out what they could financially sustain by mortgage payment. They went out and bought a house. That's incurring good debt and building an asset. I think we have to continue looking at that with the city. So when our roads need work, and they do, uh, we have to look at what kind of debt repayment we have. The more we incur debt, though, the more we pay in interest payments and the repayment of that debt. So. Capital versus operations is going to be a very important discussion for the new council coming in and how we do it. In one minute. <laughs> <laughs> so we spend, um, you know, days and days and days at this as a, as a city council when it's budget time. Um, obviously, we need to put some more money into our infrastructure. We are falling behind. Um, and so are many, many communities across BC and Canada. Uh, instead of cutting, I would like to figure out a way of identifying how we can provide services more efficiently. Um, and we need to identify some, some new revenues or look to our, our neighbours in the region who utilize a lot, of our, our, a lot of our services and see about sharing the cost of some of those things. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I, Everybody's in favor of cutting the budget until the cleaver is pointed at their pet project or hobby. <laughs> <laughs> we all discover what's important to us. So, uh, more important than specifically what we're going to cut is making sure we're doing, you know, massive public engagement efforts so people understand the need for cuts and revenue increases where necessary. Because if we, as a six people plus a mayor, whoever gets elected, do this. Uh, if people, we don't bring people along politically, uh, they'll boot us out next council and someone can reverse that. Because this is not a four year endeavor, this is going to be the work of a generation. Uh, I would say with respect to our operations, uh, one thing I've been an advocate for going back to my time at the event center is a destination marketing fund. It's something they have in Grand Prairie, it's something they have in communities throughout British Columbia that would offset uh, a lot of the demands on our single largest expense, which is uh, well, ditto, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, you know what, it's, it's going to be a public conversation, that is for sure. But it's also not all doom and gloom. And I think sometimes we forget to talk about the things that we've been successful at in dealing with fiscal gap. And, you know, we have looked at and we have increased the fees and user charges for facilities in the community. We have development cost charges for those developing. We made a partnership and we sell our reclaimed water. We did our master transportation plan. We're doing the flood mitigation work and we put in a new sewer trunk line. So we are doing things. They're just not quick. And if there was a magic wand, there isn't a person sitting up here that wouldn't wave it and say, done. Um, so it's going to be a public discussion. It is going to be 
really long-term planning. And I, I did mention at the last forum, you know, we'll get there, but we're going to do it together. Yeah, again, you know, it's probably going to be a similar answer to a lot of people up here. Um, I think, you know, doing a complete analysis and looking at the situation, I don't think that we're unique in this situation. There's a lot of municipalities up there that are also facing, you know, their own financial crisis. And I think, the, you know, looking at what we can do, um, looking at the recommendations that can be put forward, are we spending our money in the most efficient way? Are there other opportunities that we can um, access to increase our revenue in our community? These are all questions that I think are important, and they're also important to go back to the entire community and all of the taxpayers as well. Because if it does come down to you know making the cuts that need to be made, um, we can't do that without the support of the entire community. Yeah, I, I agree with a lot of what the previous council candidates have been saying, but uh, I think that the trick is, is to go into and be the efficient eye on a lot of these over year and year over occurring costs, like a lot of these annual flowers we have to spend thousands of dollars on every year. We replace it with perennials. There was once a perennial the RCMP detachment now that I swore were rhubarb. They look just like it, but they had to plant them and took them out this year. If you would do something as simple as plant a perennial in there, they wouldn't have to do as much input. You would still have to have the staff watering it, which is an ongoing cost. But you wouldn't have to buy thousands of dollars worth of flowers. That is one step. Talk to the recreation societies, the soccer clubs, the skating clubs. What are the services that we are providing those recreation facilities that they don't actually use and cut those instead of anything else? Okay, so um, as I said before, we're going to take this out into the floor now. So if anybody has any questions they'd like to ask your candidates up here. Um, <laughs> Question that we were all asked, I think that was in the paper, 
Um, and it was to do with downtown, and, and my answer was short and sweet, and I think that kind of sums up anything in, in expectations is, a downtown core is only as strong as those who support it. So a community is only as strong as the citizens who support it. And so that's my short and sweet answer. Uh, yeah, uh, without trying to be redundant, I'll, I'll see if I can put any kind of original spin on it. So it, it, kind of going back to the last point we asked about, um, or the point asked about the budget, uh, the city did try and mobilize an effort around putting together an advisory committee of interested stakeholders to help identify where they wanted to do budget cuts. That's my knowledge, it was kind of scuttled because they didn't have the outpouring of public interest they were hoping for. Uh, and that's not unique to that in it, that specific initiative. I, I've been to a number of public meetings in the city and what I've found is until people are upset about something, they don't show up. I've been to budget meetings, I've been to, uh, you know, the city's uh, marijuana legalization meeting was held a week after a meeting on the Rotary Lake and there were 10 times as many people at the Rotary Lake meeting about the marijuana meeting. I guarantee you, um, if something goes sideways with the marijuana laws, a bunch of people will show up to a meeting. So you need to show up before things go sideways. Uh, that's what we need from you as citizens, and that's what we should expect. I shouldn't have sat in the middle. <laughs> so um, obviously, I, I feel like um, I'm hoping that the citizens um, will stay engaged um, and come and talk to us. Make sure that we know what's important to you all, and uh, yeah, don't yell at us in the safe way. <laughs> well, first of all, thanks for the question. It was a great question. I've attended many of these forums, and it's rarely do does an elected person or someone running for office get asked what could the constituents do to help them run. So, thank you for that. Uh, I think it's engaged, people have said it before, whether you have the opportunity to come to a council meeting, whether you put pen to paper and write something down, whether you stop any of your elected officials downtown at the Safeway. I agree, you don't have to yell, we're good listeners, I think, for the most part, but we live in a free and democratic society that isn't enjoyed around this world uh, in some areas. People fought and died for our right to have the right to cast a vote. I encourage people uh, to get out and do that, and let's not take it for granted, because I think far too often we do. We, we live in the best country uh, in the world, we live in the best province, and we live in the best community, but it will take all of us to keep that going. So participate, that's it in a nutshell. Similar to what the uh, councillor said, um, candidates had said before, is being engaged and participate. The biggest thing is hearing from you, um, you know, and also not only what you don't like, but also what you do like. Um, how are we doing? Um, we know how you're doing with something if you get both positive and negative feedback, right? Um, where do you start from if you don't get both of those? So um, be engaged and um, be part of your community. Yeah, basically the same thing. I mean, we've got some of the biggest decisions in the history of Dawson Creek coming up with uh, dealing with fair share and we'll be talking about things like uh, our recreation uh, programs, um, tourism, uh, beautification, um, basically everything that, that the city pays for, those will all be topics that come up in uh, in this process and the public has got to be involved so that's what I would expect is that uh, all of the residents and all of the business owners participate in that process businesses are paying three and a half times the taxes that uh, the residents pay and it's not just taxes there's infrastructure charges on your utility bills there's development cost charges for for businesses all of those are monies that where we're trying to increase the revenue but it's on the backs of the taxpayers it's it's not some somebody somewhere paying it's you people that are paying so you know the taxpayers have said like cut I'm sorry we're cut not. your your time's expired i wanted a little more <laughs> <laughs> like
you did with it for buying it. Well, yes, certainly uh, I expect the citizenry to get involved and informed and to look for the big picture. But in my experience, you know, the citizens, I have confidence that the citizens of this community will get involved. I think the problem lies with how the city engages the, the public. From my ex previous experience, whenever I had a diff big decision to make, or the school board had a big decision to make, if you structured it with clear information, a good process of involvement, the public engaged with that. And I think it's a two-way street. I don't believe that we do have an apathetic public. I think we have a public that hasn't been engaged in a sophisticated and deep way. Thank you. Are there uh, any other questions from the audience? Crime with Dawson Creek is at an unparalleled high. My challenge to you is what can council do to uh, deter crime here in Dawson? Thank you. I think we can clarify our expectations of the uh, our local detachment. I think we need to be clear uh, engage rather with the crime reduction strategies that the RCMP formulate given the nature of the crime in this community and insist that the engagement not be just with city council but with a representative group of, of the community. I think that we need to explore the installation of uh, traffic cameras. I'm told that traffic cameras not only deal with issues around traffic but they have a good spin-off for solving other other crimes, and we don't have any here. I think that uh, we need to really look at our nuisance bylaws. Um, and there was an issue raised last night, which Councillor Wilford is bringing to council next meeting. Um, I think we need to look at that, because there are some problem areas, some problem houses, and I don't think we seem to be doing a good job in follow-up in dealing with those issues. Thank you. Uh, the, I mean, council can support the police. Uh, you know, we have discussions with the, with the police and trying to identify um, problem areas and try and focus uh, uh, initiatives on those problem areas. I think one of the things that we we don't do well is to publicize the what's going on. So I think if people are aware of the crime that's going on, then people will participate in crime prevention as well. Um, you know, things like lighting and cameras and that, I think that's standard. Um, but the, I think the publicity is important. I think people need to be aware of what's going on. And um, I think we need to do a better job of that. And also lobbying the judicial system. I mean, you know, you've got, there's a lot of people that are, their, their career is crime now. And uh, it's like it's like a catch and release program. Or you know, it's really difficult to to get fair penalties. Excellent answer. Thank you. Um, so the crime reduction. Obviously, um, you know, the job the RCMP um, they can't be everywhere. So my biggest thing is, you know, as a citizen as well, um, you know, when we see a crime, call it in, report it. Um, and the biggest thing, much like. Um, said is, you know what, um, publicizing that, making it aware, you know, know your neighbors, know what's happening, what's going on in, in um, the neighborhoods and stuff so that you're aware of what's going on and not um, vigilant to it. All right. Following up, I think it is incumbent on any new council and existing council to work with your detachment. I think the first thing that a newly elected council does when it comes to the issue of crime and working with your RCMP is put together their policing priorities, what they see represents the needs of the constituents that they represent, continue, and I know council does this on a monthly basis, to engage with the staff sergeant to find out what's working and what isn't. Uh, but it's clear, we hear this time and time again, and the issue of drug houses in the city. 
Uh, the people that live near them uh, seem to know where they're at. They seem to know what's going on. Uh, the challenge is, uh, I think, our courts and our law system. We have to find a way to not only engage with the RCMP, but with other levels of government, particularly based on the crime itself, the provincial and federal governments, so that there is some deterrent. Because today, it is very difficult within our system. I can only imagine how frustrating it is for the RCMP to go out, do the job we hire them to do, and then only to see the person they've engaged and taken off the street to be put back on them, as uh, Paul said. But we run with the RCMP. We do not have a municipal force, which is more costly. But at one point, you have to say to yourself as a community, what's going to work best for us in the public interest? I think we can work with the RCMP. It's up to council to do that. Thanks, Blair. You're very welcome. You took my answer. So, uh, that's right. We need to sit down with our staff sergeant and um, let them know what council's priorities are around crime reduction. And I think we also need to uh, work with organizations and support organizations in our communities, uh, in our community who are, who are doing this work. Crime Stoppers, Neighborhood Watch, harm reduction groups, um, victim services. I think that we need to engage all of those organizations as well as our RCMP, as well as our citizens on this on this issue. Thank you. Um, yeah, so like I said, you're, you're in the middle, you're, you're repeating a lot of answers, but uh, engage as a council, anyway, above and beyond all the, the straight community stuff. Uh, yeah, emphasize return uh, as we're working with our local detachment to the fundamentals of community policing. Uh, one of the challenges we face is as a rural northern community, and it's no different than other rural northern communities, we get a lot of new recruits uh, who come here. Some of them we've got a good local core, but some of them do a few years and then they post out to somewhere else close to home. And they don't build those connections. They don't build the connections with the nonprofits, with the neighborhood watch, with the parents groups. Uh, and as a result, in a small town, yeah, a certain component of the crime issue is has to do with transients and fly and fly out in the industry. Uh, another component is it, it's homegrown, and these are our neighbors, these are kids we play hockey with. And if people <coughs> don't have a familiarity and trust for local police detachment, they're not going to report on their cousin's roommate or, you know, their brother's ex. So uh, there is a component of this which has to be the fact that we're a small, close knit community, and we need to make sure we are uh, giving our local detachment the opportunity to make those connections so they're not being frustrated by that. Thank you. Um, and again, ditto to what, what's been said, but, um, and I did, the lady that did mention the situation um, at the last forum. It, it was sent to um, staff and it will be on the next uh, council agenda, so it will be discussed during community the whole and, and new council business. But the other thing that we have done and we continue to do, and we just did it at UBCM, is to advocate to the provincial government and federal when we have the opportunity that we need to have a better funding source and we need to have support for our local detachment. And another thing, and I know it's being worked on and I wish it would move a lot faster, but it's some sort of border joint situation with Alberta because not only are we a northern community, we're a border community. And so we can't control that element coming back and forth. And so we need to have some sort of works within our RCMP that are working across that border because it's a huge issue for us. Um, so all we can do is keep trying. But at the end of the day, if it's reported, we're going to get on it. Uh, yeah, so again, similar to everyone else here, uh, I think a good working relationship with the RCMP and council is key. We need an understanding of what's happening in the community, as well as every citizen of the community also has a responsibility to engage in that as well. Understanding, what, again, what's happening in our neighborhoods and on your own streets um, has a lot. Reporting what's happening, reporting crime when you see it uh, is huge as well. I think that what we should also focus a little bit on is why is the crime happening and a lot of times it's our vulnerable sectors of our population or people that are living um, with desperate times or desperate needs that turn to crime. So again, supporting the nonprofit groups, supporting you know the victim services and supporting things like addiction. 
um, is a huge issue as well. So as much as we try to tackle the front as we see crime happening, we also need to tackle the back side of crime and what it means and why is it happening in our community. I uh, personally believe crime is a symptom of a, a problem that happened a long, long time ago. You're not born a, a criminal, you become a criminal. And truthfully, the, the nice thing would be to do would be enable the RCMP with good laws and unlimited funds. But it's a countrywide problem right now where crime rates are going up. The RCMP, the Ontario Police, all of them are all having issues with this problem. And I think it's incumbent on the society to come together and enable police to do their job better. Look to your neighbors, become friends with them. Even if your neighbor is a crackhead and he lives in a house, you know, if you interact with them, I live next to a crack house when I live in downtown Dawson Creek, and they never robbed us because I talk to them on a regular basis. There's nothing I can do to make them go away. But if, if you interact with them, they know who you are, that's how you stop things. Bring them into the community so they're not on the outskirts, you know. It's, it's a multiple of those different solutions to the problem. Thank you all for your answers to that question. Um, anybody else would like to ask a question? Thank you. Thank you everyone for running for Dawson Creek. And most of you know who I am. I'm counselor to the Village of Bruce Creek for the last four and a half years. And for us, we've been assigned portfolios. So my question to each candidate is, would you be in favor of being assigned portfolios when you're running for council, as a councillor? And if not, why not? Uh, the concept of portfolios for city council, it's actually a really neat idea. I haven't really put any thought into it because it's a new idea to me, but it would definitely have aspects and it would let you really hone in on topics that that counselor is particularly good at. There are different talents that different candidates here have and you know what, being able to really emphasize your, your talents to a particular cause probably would be beneficial. Um, yeah, it takes a very diverse and unique uh, background of everybody that sits on council to come up with these decisions. So the idea of everybody having a portfolio or an idea of you're kind of the one responsible for looking into this and being an advocate for this portion, I think has its benefits uh, because we can't all be everywhere, everywhere all the time. So, you know, finding something and finding that niche that you have a passion for, um, whether you're assigned or get to pick which of portfolios you want to be a part of, I think it's a huge benefit because when you're passionate about something, or I know for myself, when I take the time and really research and get really involved in that, then you have a better understanding and then are able to bring it back to the entire group because we work as a team on council. And that's part of being a team player is, you know, you might have to be somebody that speaks on this topic because you're the one that's the expert and the rest of us need to sit back and listen and vice versa. The next person might have a better perspective or a better understanding. So I think there's some value in that. Um, so as an elected official, we work under a committee of whole and I said in my opening that I have complete faith in the staff that we have and the jobs that they do. Um, I think as a whole, we have to look at our, our budget and those things coming forward. But I'm also not prepared to sit at the table and fight my colleagues for pennies for my portfolio. And that sometimes can happen. Um, I have faith in what the staff does, and I also work very hard on the committees that I've been appointed to, that I liaison with. And it gives me better and greater opportunity to be out in the community and hear what the citizens and the taxpayers have to say. I can't, I've never worked under a portfolio um, type setup, so that's all I can tell you. It, what the system we have, I see is working, and I know that I can spend a greater amount of my time on those appointments that I have, that I'm bringing a greater voice, voice back to the table than having focus just on one portfolio. Yes, thank you for the question, Councillor. Um, so with respect, I, yeah, I don't know if I, I want to uh, be something as formal as being appointed a portfolio, especially uh, if there's an executive component. I do think that starts to muddy the waters where you, as uh, Councillor Wilmer said, you're fighting for, for funds or competing with departments. But I do know uh, our current council, everybody does kind of 
uh, fall into their specific area of interest with their liaison roles. Um, Charlie does the Mile Zero Historical Society. Uh, Paul is, is active. Everyone's active on something. Uh, for my part, I'd be interested. I know Councilor Rogers, uh, before he opted not to run again, is very active in putting together a youth advisory uh, panel, uh, which I, if I were fortunate enough to be elected, would be very interested in picking up. Similarly, uh, Councilor McFadden used to be the liaison to the public library as somebody who worked as a librarian in college part time. Uh, I'd be very much interested in doing that. And uh, Chamber of Commerce obviously is an organization near and dear to my heart. So I don't know if it's anything as informal as being assigned. I think we've got areas of interest up here that we can all pursue. And then if there's something left over that nobody wants, uh, if there's you know a fiscal gap with advisory liaison, I'm sure yeah. someone will be assigned that. Um, but I'm sorry, that's uh, your time's up. <laughs> uh, so, uh, no, I, I don't of a portfolio system, Andre, um, for many of the reasons Shaley and Jeremy have mentioned. Uh, we do get um, appointed to these different liaison positions, and I find that that is working well. Um, you know, you, you, the mayor has a conversation with you, and then off you go like to that, that appointed place. Um, we have Committee of the Whole, so every second meeting of council during the month, we are all brought up to speed on all the departments so that nobody else knows anything more about anything else that's going on in the, in the city works. And, and we have a very qualified staff that run those departments and manage those departments and, you know, I don't feel the need to be down there in the weeds managing departments. So, no, I am not in favor. How about you, Blair? All right, it took a lot of questions over two debates to find some differences up here at this table, but I am uh, wholeheartedly in support of a portfolio system. I have worked under both the Committee of the Whole as well as Portfolio. Uh, I want to be clear, if you work under a portfolio system, it is the mayor who determines which councillor receives which portfolio after discussing uh, the opportunities. Portfolios would fall under such things as Somebody would hold parks and rec, somebody would hold finance, somebody would hold public works or recreation. Um, but having worked them in both systems, I, it is really a personal choice. My view is the portfolio, portfolio system is better. It does not mean you're down telling the greater operator how to file your streets. It means you're focused on that, but you bring that information to the council table because it is important that every councillor and mayor knows what's going on in the city but you can focus more diligently on one portfolio, bring that work to the table, allow all your counselors to ask questions about it, and you can do the same in return to the other portfolio holder. Um, as someone who's not familiar with portfolio, um, I'm not sure if I'm against it or for it. However, I do think it's important um, that people are put in the places. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses, um, so I think putting someone where their strengths are um, would be definite and um, beneficial, but at the same time, knowing what's going on. So um, if you're s selected to a certain um, portfolio, um, are you kept up um, on everything else? Um, so I think being... Um, you know, versed on everything, um, and knowing what's going on is more beneficial than just being selected maybe to one little area. Yeah, I'm in favor of portfolios as well. I, I think it would uh, lessen the workload on administration. They go through a lot of uh, time and effort to prepare information for us uh, through this committee of the whole process, and I think uh, we would have a more hands-on we get more knowledge participating in the process as opposed to, you know, receiving these reports uh, once a month or once every two months. It's a very interesting question, Andre. Um, I, I enjoy my liaison roles to the historical society, my zero part society, the arts and so on. But uh, that's something we can all do. I, I believe in continuation of the liaison system. However, I'm not speaking against the portfolio system. I see it completely different. We have a very, and this is not a criticism, uh, but I think we need to really consider how we can engage the elected officials more deeply, more knowledgeably, 
in the operations. It's quite a mayor-centric system we have. So I think this topic needs exploration. I think there's lots of advantages that could accrue, um, and it doesn't mean that others would be excluded. It just means somebody who is an elected person has uh, knowledge, just like being a cabinet minister, uh, I would suggest. So I'm, I'm open to it, for sure. Thank you all for your answers. Thanks, everyone, for your questions. Unfortunately, we have uh, no more time for... Uh, Is it an online question that you want to ask for? Okay, sure. I'm trying to end the uh, okay. audience question. Okay. Great. Um, but I do have one more question uh, to ask for all candidates before we head to uh, closing remarks. And uh, that is, um, sorry, let me get to it here. Um, so do you think the downtown core is successful? And uh, what could you do to strengthen it? Charlie. I think the success stories in our downtown, there's some very successful businesses. And there's some businesses that are not successful. It's a patchwork. The council has identified the, this downtown core for some long-term planning. I think if we identified something like a, had a developmental theme, it would make it a more of attractive place to, to go. The, many communities are, the downtown core is, is not well used. Uh, people tend to go to where the big box stores are. I, so I'm, I'm not going to say uh, what exactly, but I do recognize the need that uh, we can't gender whether the business is going to be successful or not. We can, we can sure make the, the downtown an attractive and safe place to visit. Okay. Yeah, I think it's fairly successful as well, although there, there needs to be a lot of improvement or a lot of some new development there. Um, there's some privately owned lots that are vacant and there's some city owned lots that are vacant. To my mind, looking at the uh, development of other cities, they're, they're trying to attract more people to live downtown. So we need some developments down uh, in, in the downtown, whether it's, uh, you know, seniors housing or social housing or whatever, um, to get more people in the downtown area. And I think that would help. Now, you know, how you do it, I think the city has some ability to provide incentives. I think right now with uh, development cost charges and that that are being levied, I think that deters some developments. So I, I think there's room for the city to look at it hard and get something figured out. Um, I agree, like, I think the downtown core has improved over years, however, you know, there is some vacant lots, you know, due to, there's some demolitions and there's some fires, unfortunately, we're experienced downtown, so I think there is some growth that, um, that could happen downtown to um, attract people to come into the downtown core area. Um, how you do that, again, I think that would be something that, you know, kind of make a plan and, um, you know, maybe talk to you um, within the community and find out what might um, be something to benefit. Well, I believe we are uh, reasonably successful in our downtown core. I think we are not alone in Dawson Creek. I think most communities see that new development coming in is developing on the entryways to their communities, uh, whether it be big box stores or new development. Uh, that is not a trend that is only relevant to Dawson Creek, but right across, I think, the entire country. I think we've done a good job. Uh, the one thing I've always approached every day with is, can we do better? Yes, I think we can. But I don't believe that we are going to be the ones that set what has to be done there. We have to work with the existing business community down there today. We have to listen to the people that may have ideas. And I agree that one possibility, and I say only one, is to pick a theme. And we are world famous. Uh, start with the Alaska Highway, Mile Zero. Uh, we may want to continue to build around that. But can we do more? Yes. Is it working relatively well now? Yes. Your elected officials are here to try and make things better. So I also uh, think that downtown is doing relatively well. Um, I feel like 
there's always a conversation going on about re revitalizing the downtown. And I like the idea of um, picking a theme and, and going with that. We own our mile, mile zero on the Alaska Highway. We've got a lot of empty lots down there. Um, in the municipal world, we call them ground fields. And uh, we, need, we need to figure out some ways to deal with those ground fields to uh, encourage development, you know, close down gas stations and burnt down uh, businesses and those kind of things where the land isn't necessarily 100% and so it's, it would be expensive for people to develop those. We have to come up with some ways to uh, figure out how to do that. Uh, thank you. Yeah, once again, the curse of being in the middle of the days, you uh, reiterate what everyone else has said. Uh, just say, with respect to theme, uh, one community that has uh, similar geographic challenges to us uh, that I actually lived in for a year after high school and did my first year of college is Whitehorse, and it's on the other side of the Alaska Highway. And obviously, their economy is much more dependent on tourism than ours is as an industry town. But if you want to look at a model uh, of how a theme can work to enrich your downtown, and not only as a tourist attraction, but as a quality of life enhancer for uh, residents and as uh, uh, support for business. The other element I'd emphasize is Paul's point about we as a council need to make sure that we're not encumbering would-be developers with uh, either poor communication of uh, our policies and expectations and we want to make sure we're communicating clearly and consistently with would-be developers. Thank you. All right. I, I think I kind of answered this a little bit earlier, but uh, I'm going to add to it. So our downtown core is only as strong as those that support it. So if we don't support what's down there, they're, they're not going to last. We can't keep the doors open. But one thing we have done is brought in um, the scope of what we have is called a facade program. It's partner with NDIT, so businesses can apply for new signage, maybe upgrade their frontage. Um, and I think it's up to $5,000, they get $2,500 back. So more of our downtown businesses are actually participating in that program. So we're going to see some new looks, I think, coming up here in the spring. Um, as well, you know, and I just kind of talked about my opening, I'll talk about it about again in my closing. The city does have land. There's opportunity there for transitional housing or affordable housing with maybe retail on the bottom. So we need to work with some uh, private partnerships and get that moving along. But uh, it's, it's coming along that I, I guess as the local champion of shopping, shop local. Uh, yeah, definitely you want to shop local. Our downtown core, uh, I do think, has success stories definitely in it. There's times of the year when we get huge influxes downtown, especially when we have downtown events. And I would say it's successful if my 13-year-old daughter finally told me this year that, Mom, we don't have to go to Grand Prairie to do any shopping. I love going downtown. So to me, that was a huge success story that she loves to be downtown. So I think anything that we can do to generate more excitement, more traffic in our downtown, and I'm not talking just vehicle, but foot traffic, uh, every time that we've had an event, like either the car show that happens down there, we have lots of multicultural festivals that happen on some of our city corners. Uh, those things are really great. They bring people to our downtown core. They make it fun. They make it walkable. And then you always, well, to me, I discover new things when I walk around our town. I discover stores that I never knew were there. So I think generating more traffic would be great. Yeah, I, I think our downtown core is doing fairly well for the aging infrastructure that it's utilizing. Uh, I think the biggest that problem that causes the fires um, a lot of the problems down there is that most of the downtown core is really old. A lot of the buildings are very old buildings. We don't have very many new, updated buildings. And from my time traveling the world, I found the most successful downtowns are the ones with lots of residents in them. I'm a firm believer that a commercial is the main floor of a downtown core, and then you need residents up above them. If you don't have foot traffic, they won't succeed. You need to bring people there. It's not just the people that live there. It's the people that go there to visit the people that live there and walk by the stores on a daily basis. It's about showing people that it's alive. The people walking around is what brings life back to downtown town core and make it a little bit better. Okay, thank you uh, each of you for your questions. Um, we're going to move to closing remarks now. So. Uh, 
as I said at the beginning, uh, you all have a maximum of three minutes, and uh, we'll start that off with uh, David. Okay, I'd just like to thank you all for sticking out this um, debate. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone that's tuning in on TV, if you're on it. And I'd like to say I am going to fight for this community. I'm, I'm a firm believer in building. It's not about today, it's not about tomorrow. It's what we do the last the 50 years, the 20 years. I believe in bringing in things that are efficient. It's not about a day-to-day -day thing. It's not about the next four years. It's about the next ten years. You know, I've, I've built a lot of buildings around town, and most of the ones I've been involved in, I make sure I do the things that make it last. You know, you do that little bit extra every time you can to just make it last. I like the idea of putting trees into downtown instead of on flower pots, so you don't have to be maintained all the time. I like trees down in the parks to help with the erosion. And it brings back a thing, a, a love of the community. Because you can look back in 20, 30, 40 years and show your children what you did as council. The things that you brought to the city, the things that you built, things that made it better. I've, I've traveled the world and I've come back to the Dawson Creek because this is where I live. And I will tell you something about this place. It is a magical little milk in the world that no one realizes how good we really have it here. We don't have the major natural disasters. We have a great community. We have all the resources to build a great community. We have farming, we have mining, we have oil and gas. We have all of the things we need to make this community great and we've done good. But we need to do more and we need to try and help bring this fiscal problem under control so we can bring more recreation, so we can do more things for this society and this community. Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you everyone for coming out this afternoon. Um, I would love an opportunity to sit on the city council. I'm active in our community and regardless of whether I am elected or not, I'm still going to be active in our community because this is how much it means to me. Uh, my children have said to me that when they grow up and move away that I'm never allowed to move to Dawson Creek because they always want to be able to come home. And that's really why I want to be part of this decision making on this side of council uh, is because this is my home. This is where I'm raising my children. It's where I hope that someday my grandkids, not too soon, will come and uh, come and want to be part of this community as well. I believe in the idea of fostering the community idea. Uh, I think we've got lots of challenges ahead of us, but I'm really open to working hard, um, making that commitment to the long hours and putting in the time to do the research and the commitment to also being transparent and committing to keeping the lines of communication open. I'm a, usually a fairly accessible person. I'm out in the community a lot, working with a lot of nonprofit groups and a lot of other community groups. So I really like having those conversations when you're in Safeway or when you're walking down the sidewalk because that's when real conversations seem to happen. Uh, you know, when you get to the heart of knowing what people's issues are. So I hope that I will be successful in running for City Council and it also takes a big part of the community to get out and vote. So I encourage everybody to get out and vote for who you think your next team should be. So I appreciate you all coming. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, I would be honored to represent the citizens of our community uh, for another term. And I believe I bring a voice to the table that is unique. I do not shy away from conversations that may bring a strong difference of opinion. I lost my place, sorry. <laughs> On one direction or another. I believe I'm prepared for experience and forward thinking, and I'm open-minded on what lies ahead. We are facing some big changes, and we must continue to build on our successes. And to do this, it's necessary to hear all of the citizens. I do not bring a voice that will favor one demographic or another. I listen to all, and I pride myself on having an open door and listening to anyone who wants to talk. In all things, we're going to have to have balance, and I believe that a good leader will talk about what is great, but a great leader is going to talk to you about what lies in our shadows, and I am willing and prepared to discuss what lies in those shadows. Our community has always come together when tragedy hits, and we hold each other close, and we lift each other up. But in the time ahead, we need to come together. We need to face and discuss the ripple effects 
of growth. We need to discuss the housing gaps, increased crime, homelessness, the addiction opioid crisis. And these are the things that lie in our shadows. So I would like the opportunity to continue to be a voice at your table. I ask that no matter who you choose, that you just get out and vote because it is a gift of freedom that many don't have. So just get out and vote, no matter who you choose. Um, but I do ask that on October 20th, you vote for Shaley Wilbur. Thank you, everybody. Uh, once again, thank you to CJBC TV and the Kelly Kirk Center for the Arts and all of you and everybody watching on Facebook for taking the time to engage your democracy. Uh, this has been a great conversation. I'd also like to thank my fellow uh, candidates. Uh, no matter how this goes, a week from now, I will be incredibly grateful for the experience to have run. And uh, whether I win or not, I've had the opportunity to make a lot of new friends and have some really good conversations and broaden. Uh, my social circle and height my level of awareness. So if nothing else, I'll, I'll take that away from this and move forward with it. Uh, as I said on Thursday, and I'll reiterate tonight, as one of the people who's uh, aspiring to be a, a new face on council, I have no illusions about uh, having all the answers. I hope my conduct and answers here tonight have at least uh, convinced you that I can be a valuable part of that team. Uh, but I do assume, if I'm fortunate enough to be elected, there will be a steep learning curve. And I think if you look at my track record in this community, both uh, my uh, paid employment and my involvement in various nonprofits enterprises, uh, you'll, you'll come away with the conclusion that I'm willing to put that work in. And uh, yeah, once again, please do vote. And if you're showing up here, I probably don't need to tell you to vote, but tell your friends to vote. <laughs> Uh, make it a priority, make it uh, a value, you know, um, that is, is commended. We need uh, everybody to participate in order for our democracy to work as intended. So uh, thank you once again for coming up and doing your civic duty and uh, enjoy the week. I'll see you on the other side. Thank you all for coming today, and thank you to the organizers. Thank you, CJBC and, and uh, Calvin Crook Performing Arts Center, um, and my family and my friends who uh, continue to support me. I really thank you for that. Um, so I first ran and was elected to council in 2008, and uh, I feel I bring to the table 10 years of experience and knowledge uh, about local government and municipal government. I wasn't a counselor who knew it all from the start, so I did learn a lot over these years. I promised to represent the city of Dawson Creek in a positive way in our business with higher levels of government. I think it's important to grow and maintain those relationships no matter which party forms that government. Uh, and helping the province and the feds understand who we are, the challenges and opportunities facing our communities, and how they can best support us is a top priority. I'm excited about the future of our city. I will continue to support a diversity of development that will strengthen our economy and our community into the future. I will continue to support an inclusive community that recognizes diversity. I believe that a community that values arts and culture as well as recreational activities will have a strong social fabric that promotes health and happiness for everybody in the city. Dawson Creek is blessed with many organizations and groups groups that work to make our city a better place, and I appreciate their con contribution and will work to engage and support them in the future. I will continue to support environmental sustainability with a focus on building a resilient community by adapting our infrastructures to withstand the effects of climate change. Undertaking these challenges in a process that respects the professional advice that we have received over the years um, and making um, use of federal and provincial grants is something that I think we need to do. Fiscal sustainability is always top of mind in this job and it's not a responsibility that I take lightly. During my time on council, I've supported policies and procedures aimed at good fiscal manage management. In closing, I'd like to say that I've been really proud to represent the citizens of Dawson Creek for the past years and I will continue to work very hard over the next four years to build a community that we can all be proud of. Uh, for a positive, progressive voice on your city council, please vote Cheryl Schumann.
Well, thank you again to uh, all of you who took your time out of your day today, those watching at home, uh, and to the organizers. Thank you, you and uh, your organization for this and the facility we're in. Uh, we've heard a lot of good questions, a lot of good answers up here. Uh, I think the one thing that binds all candidates is their love for the community. Uh, as I said, I've grown up here my entire life. I've had the opportunity to serve an elected office, which was and has been a true privilege and an honour. Uh, I'm asking for your support in the upcoming municipal election so that I can again uh, bring my ideas, uh, bring my love for this city and my past experience to the table which I believe can help the others on the team, along with myself and the mayor and the community, make our community even greater than it is. Uh, somebody had asked me at the last forum, well, where you've served in public office, you've served as the mayor, you've served as a councillor, uh, you've served as a minister in the provincial government, why, what's your motive for running? Uh, it's so sad, I love Dawson Creek. I, I'm here, I'm here for life. Our children are here, our grandchildren are here. And I believe that the responsibility of an elected official is to not only listen to the people they represent, but to bring their ideas. There is going to be, without question, some very difficult choices. I think that's fair to say whether you're flush with money or you're challenged with money. Those difficult decisions come from both sides of that. We will move forward in a positive way, without question. I know that financially we can get our house in order. We can build upon the past work of previous councils, the existing council that's sitting. I say thank you to each and every one of our elected officials, whether they serve in Dawson Creek or Andre and Boos Hoopy. We build a strong region together. And that's one of the first things I learned back in 1993 as a, a younger person. Uh, I said this at the last forum. I grew up playing sports. You grew up playing hockey. Uh, Mayor Thorlickson, a gentleman named Mayor Steve Thorlickson, was the mayor of Fort St. John at the time. Uh, him and I got together shortly after I was elected as mayor, and uh, it became clear to both of us that we were probably very strong-headed and uh, we should listen to each other. Uh, but what I learned and what has came very evident is together we'll grow our region in a healthy manner. Individually, each community thinking they can do it on their own, we aren't quite as strong. And I can tell you provincial governments notice that, federal governments notice that, and if the opportunity for us to continue to build on the relationships in the region we have uh, is there, and I believe it is, we will be a stronger voice which will benefit all of us in Dawson Creek and the region together. On October 20th, or at the early polls, I believe it's the 17th, I ask for your support and cast your vote for Blair Armstrong. Thank you. I would be very honored to have the opportunity to be a member of the Dawson Creek City Council. I understand that there are some difficult decisions to be made moving forward, and I'm prepared and committed to work my hardest and to the best of my ability. My goal is to listen to the issues, find the answers, and thank you by name. In my life, I want to be heard, so I promise to hear others within our community. I'm committed to the overall welfare of the community, and I'm completely devoted to, um, I'm completely willing to devote my time. I'm committed to making things happen and have an impact on our community. I'm committed to representing all the people and providing services that meet the needs and residents and their families. I'm committed to developing long-term plans, establishing both short and long-term community goals and objectives. I'm com committed to doing a good job and focusing on the big picture. I know I will not have all the answers at the beginning, but I can promise you I'll be committed to finding those answers. I'm prepared to be committed to the city of Dawson Creek in a larger capacity than I'm committed to my running. As most of you know, from my passion for running, this means a lot. As someone who recently ran a marathon with two left running shoes due to a packing oversight, I understand what commitment, determination, and mind over matter can do. Even though I'll be losing my right toe now, it was worth every bit of sacrifice to cross that finish line with a definite handicap and an amazing time. This is the type of commitment, determination, and hard work I'm prepared to bring to the table if I'm elected. I'm prepared to listen, to learn, to serve, and to lead. Please roll for Amy Kemp on October 20th for Dawson Creek City. I'm asking for your support as well. I will use my extensive experience on council and my knowledge of how the city works to uh, work with council and to work with taxpayers to come to terms with our financial and infrastructure issues. And I'd also 
work with the community and with the service industries here in town to capitalize on the resource activities, uh, especially the LNG that's going on around us. So thank you. Well, Jane, thank you for coming. I appreciate the fact that you come here on such a nice day. And uh, for those watching this on, on TV, it's important to be engaged and informed. I embrace much of what has been said around the aspirational qualities of life for this community. I believe I am a progressive person in that regard, but I am also a fiscal conservative. I realize that we have to have affordable taxation regime we have to have a fee structure that enables people to be able to afford taking part in, in all the events that we have here. It is, it is no secret, I believe you understand this, those of you here, that we have a financial crunch coming. Staff has been warning about this for a number of years. I've been advocating that we deal with it for a number of years. We have to deal with it. It's upon us right now. So I really believe that, uh, that I will champion the need for community engagement, meaningful community engagement. Not complex, not abstract, but concrete, specific engagement around how we deal with this problem. If we don't get this right, this community is not going to thrive, it's going to be struggling like you wouldn't believe. I hate to say this, but I wish we had followed the example as a community of other communities such as Fort St. John, Tumbler Ridge, the regional district, etc., etc., in how they handled fair share. We've grown accustomed to a, uh, using this money to operate for basic operations. As Blair identified last night, this is a dangerous, dangerous game. It's like playing Russian roulette. I'm hoping that I can use my skills and experience to really engage the community in this, to listen to the community and develop a plan that we can all feel a part of and work together while keeping our community spirit, we're dealing with the core issues that have, I think, for too long been swept under the carpet. Well, uh, thank you everyone for coming and uh, thank you as well uh, to the counselors who are, or sorry, to the candidates who are here and to everyone watching on the live stream. We hope that uh, today helped you to uh, make a decision about uh, who you might be casting your vote for on the 20th. There are also advanced polls open on the 17th. So um, again, thank you for coming and uh, I hope you uh, have a good day and uh, please come out and vote on the 20th.